Practical Wisdom for Modern Witches with your host, the Witch of Lupin Hollow. Good morning, Modern Witches. Welcome back to the Witch of Lupin Hollow YouTube channel. So today we are talking about how to know if you're really a witch. And that's a big question. Um, and it's the kind of question that I get asked a lot by readers, by viewers. Um, and it's the sort of question that you see posted often, you know, on Instagram or on a forum or wherever you happen to be hanging out. How do I know if I'm a witch? Or how do I know if I'm really a witch? This question gets posed by, you know, aspiring witches, people who are interested in this kind of alternative spiritual path all the time. Um, you know, and if you have been drawn to this path, if you've been drawn to witchcraft, if you've been drawn to tarot and divination, um, if you've been drawn to explore your spiritual identity in some way, but you just aren't quite sure what's right for you, um, you might have asked this question too. So first and foremost, I'd like to debunk a few myths. Um, number one, you do not have to be a so-called hereditary witch. You do not have to have witch ancestors, and you do not have to have been trained by a family member to be a witch. All of those things are kind of bonuses. You know, if you have really magical people in your family tree, if your parents or grandparents are witches, um, you know, if there's sort of a long history of witchcraft practices and customs, even if that's not necessarily what your family calls it, um, but you can see that there are magical practices in your family. If you have all those things, that's amazing. Um, and that's a total bonus, but you don't need any of those things to call yourself a witch or to be a witch. Um, for me, you know, there's sort of a, a general theme of intuition in my family. Um, most of the women in my family are very intuitive, very connected. Um, you know, we tend to sort of be really good at visualization. We tend to have pretty intuitive dreams, things like that. Um, but I definitely cannot say that there's anyone in my family that I would identify as a witch per se. Um, that doesn't make me not a witch, right? I mean, I'm the witch of loop and hollow. Um, so that's kind of the biggest one, I think. I think that's one of the number one questions that I see being asked is, you know, I don't have anyone before me, um, you know, in my family line or, you know, really anyone else that I know who's a witch. So does that mean I can't be a witch? Absolutely not. Um, number two myth to debunk is you do not need to have experienced some profound or unexplainable moment um, that proves to you with undeniable evidence that magic and witchcraft is real. That is nonsense. I hate when I see that kind of thing um, because it sort of keeps you from feeling as though your spiritual practice is valid if you haven't had that kind of experience. Um, you know, if you have had some kind of experience like that that proves to you that your magic is real manifest in this reality, then again, that's amazing. That's a bonus. Um, but a lot of us will never have those kinds of experiences, and that's okay. Um, you know, at the end of the day, witchcraft is a spiritual path. Um, and spirituality in all of its forms, I believe, takes a certain amount of trust and faith. Um, you know, anytime that we are trying to manifest something, anytime that we're trying to bring something into our reality, um, anytime that we are reaching out for assistance from the universe, from the divine, from a deity, um, you know, from a spirit or ancestor of some kind, that takes faith. You know, we have nothing most of us anyway, have nothing to prove to us that that works, that that is going to do the thing we want it to do. Um, but we have faith that, you know, our beliefs are valid. We have faith that, you know, our, the reality as we see it um, is, is more than what we see. Uh, and that faith is part of what makes your spiritual path um, a path, right? It's something that we have to tread. It's a journey we have to go on to find and keep that faith. So, you know, if you've had some kind of profound experience that proved to you that magic was real, um, then wonderful, you know, share it with us. Please share in the comments about your experiences. But if you haven't had that kind of experience, that does not in any way preclude you from being a witch. 
Um, number three myth to debunk. There's lots of myths to debunk. Um, number three is you don't have to be psychic. You do not have to see ghosts or spirits. Um, you know, you do not have to have psychic abilities in any way to be a witch. I think that a lot of us have, you know, a certain amount of intuitive power. Um, you know, pretty much every human has some kind of intuition within us. Um, witches in general tend to be pretty tapped into our intuition, um, and many witches are psychic, may have different kinds of um, clairvoyance, clairaudience, there's all these different kinds of clairs that, that describe what your psychic ability is. Um, some people see ghosts, some people just believe that ghosts exist. Um, I can't say that I've seen a ghost per se, but I've definitely felt ghosts. Um, you know, so there's very different experiences of your intuitive level, your psychic ability. Um, to a certain extent, we all have these things, but if you haven't experienced it yet, that does not mean that you're not a witch. Okay, number four myth to debunk. This is the last one. Um, you do not have to believe in a god or goddess. You do not have to believe in spirits. You don't have to believe in fairies. You don't have to believe in any other deity or entity in order to be a witch. So this is a big one. This is an important one because there gets to be a, quite a bit of confusion between witches and Wiccans. Um, so Wicca is a religion. Um, it's a really beautiful religion that is founded around the concepts of witchcraft and pagan rituals. Um, Wiccans, for the most part, celebrate the eight pagan sabbats, um, which many witches who are not Wiccan also celebrate the eight pagan sabbats, myself included. Um, many Wiccans celebrate the new and or full moons, um, and most Wiccans, a, a core tenet of the religion, is a belief in a god and goddess. So there is a particular pantheon, there are particular deities that Wiccans believe in, generally speaking. Witches do not necessarily believe in any of those things. So there's sort of a Venn diagram of, you know, witches and Wiccans. Um, you know, Wiccans in general are witches, but not all witches, and in fact, many or most witches are not necessarily Wiccan. So that's an important distinction to make because Wicca sort of, you know, precludes that you have to, you know, believe in these certain things or you're supposed to do things in a certain way. And if that appeals to you and calls to you, then Wicca might be the perfect path. But if believing in a god and goddess, you know, engaging in acts of worship and this sort of thing doesn't appeal to you, then you can still be a witch, you just might not be a Wiccan. So those are kind of some important distinctions to understand. Um, and it's also important to understand that you don't have to believe in anything else, any kind of entity, in order to be a witch. Um, to a certain extent, I think that you can be an atheist witch and that there are many witches who are atheist. Um, with that said, I do think that most of the witches that I know believe in something. It goes back to that concept of faith, um, you know, whether it's just having, you know, a faith and belief in your own power to manifest and create magic, then, you know, that's a sort of faith in and of itself. Um, so I think that, you know, you kind of have to explore your relationship with belief, with faith, with the concept of atheism, with the concept of deities. You know, these are all things that when you are considering whether or not the path of a witch is right for you, you have to think about those things and you have to discover for yourself what makes sense for you. Um, so just a quick recap. Um, we've debunked four myths today. Number one, you do not have to be a hereditary witch to be a witch. Number two, you do not need to have experienced some kind of profound proof or evidence that magic is real in order to be a witch. Number three, you do not have to be psychic or see ghosts or spirits in order to be a witch. And number four, you do not have to believe in a god, goddess, deity, or any other kind of entity to be a witch. So what does it mean to be a witch then, you might be wondering. <laughs> Those are all the things that don't, you mean you don't have to have to be a witch, um, but although you can do or have experienced all of these things, you don't need them to call yourself a witch. So again, what does it mean to be a witch then? This might sound a little bit trite, <laughs> but being a witch is whatever it means to you. 
you have to find your own definition of which. You have to find the core values that make up the concept of being a witch to you in your reality and on your spiritual path. Everyone's spiritual path and spiritual journey is different. Everyone has a different perspective. Everyone comes from a different background. Um, you know, everyone has a different astrological chart. Everyone has different ancestral and cultural influences. We have all of these different elements that make up who we are as a person and who we are as a witch. And so every single witch and every single witch's spiritual practice looks a little bit differently. And that's something that I am so passionate about and that I am constantly sharing about because I think it's so important to really create the path that is truly and utterly unique to you. So a couple of things that make up a witch, right? Number one, um, I think that a witch is someone who understands her or their own power. Um, I think that a witch is someone that knows that they have the power to create, they have the power to manifest, they have the power to make magic, um, and they have the power to sort of create the reality that they want to see around them. Whether that is in very mundane ways, like creating your sanctuary, creating your sacred space, creating the you know physical environment that surrounds you, um, whether that's creating you know a particular emotional environment, creating supportive ways to you know practice self care, um, you know supportive ways to process your your mental health, um, you know all of these things are part of the creation process. So I think that number one. If you are a creator, you are a witch, um, or you could be a witch if that's what you want. Number two, and, and this is, I think, perhaps the most important, so it should, probably should have been number one, but number two, how to know if you're a witch is because you say you are. And again, that might sound a little bit trite, but it is absolute fact. If you want to pursue the path of a witch, you want to call yourself a witch, then you have to make the decision that that's what you are. And this can be very private. You know, if you are entirely in the broom closet, if no one in your life knows about this interest or path that you are setting out on, that's perfectly okay. This can be a very private journey, but you have to declare it to yourself. You have to say, I am a witch. I believe I am a witch. I believe that there is nothing that keeps me from being able to be a witch. That is a decision that you are making. You can certainly also make that decision more publicly. You can announce that this is a path that you're on now, that this is a label that you want to use. Um, but it's really, it's the internal decision that I think is the most important part. Um, and then I think that the last thing that sort of helps you to know if you're a witch is you really need to sort of choose your path. So when you choose the path of a witch, you might think that you've already made the choice, but there are endless paths of a witch. There are so many different systems and established traditions and practices and tools, so many different things that can be a part of your path that it's your job now that you've decided you're a witch it's your job to start to craft what it is that your path looks like. It's your job to figure out what that really truly means specifically to you. It's entirely up to you what that path is going to look like. So again, it comes down to, you know, being a witch is being a creator. Being a witch is being a manifester. Being a witch is creating the reality that you want to see. So that means, you know, yeah, buy all of the books, read all of the blogs, do all of the things and experiment and play. But at the end of the day, make sure that you're not just copying someone's practice wholesale. Make sure that you are thinking really critically about how that practice interacts with your own beliefs, with your own lifestyle, with your own needs, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. 
You need to take your own reality, your own person and self into account when you are setting out on the path of a witch. So three things to, to know to figure out if you're a witch. Number one, are you a creator? Can you create your reality? Hint, the answer is always going to be yes because we can all create our realities so we can all be witches. But that's something that you have to acknowledge and see in yourself before I think your path as a witch can really become expansive, right? You can say that you're a witch at any point in your life and at any point on your path, but if you haven't yet figured out that you have the control, that you have the power to create and to manifest, then your path as a witch is you're going to be kind of spinning your wheels because what is it that a witch does? A witch creates magic or a witch creates you know, new realities um, if magic isn't a word that resonates with you. Um, so number one question, are you a creator? Straightforward and simple as that. Um, number two, you know, the next thing that you have to think about is have you decided, have you made this declaration or are you kind of waffling about it? And honestly, it's okay if you're waffling about it. Maybe this path isn't right for you, but you have to really spend that time to figure out if that's a decision you are making. Um, you know, so ask yourself, have I declared to myself and or to others that I am a witch? And number three, you have to create your path. So you have to ask yourself, is the path that I'm on something that I have created for myself? Or is it something that someone else created for me? Is it something I've been, you know, guided to by my intuition? Or is it something that I've been guided to by an outside force? Um, you know, have I been thinking critically about my path, about my spiritual practice, and about my beliefs that I hold did I create them? Are they a part of my unique spiritual experience? Um, so those are a few different, I think, pretty powerful ways to know if you're a witch. Because the thing is, anyone can be a witch. In so many ways, we are all witches. We are all creators. We are all creating a reality. Some positive, some negative. Because certainly, although you have the power to create whatever reality you want, you can certainly create a negative reality. And that's not to say that, you know, everything that happens in your life is your fault or everything happens for a reason, because I don't believe that. I believe that, you know, bad things happen to good people. And sometimes that's a challenge and something that you have to work through. Maybe it teaches you something really positive in the long run. But I personally, I don't believe that, you know, we create the bad things that happen to us. I don't believe that at all. But I do believe that to a certain extent, we do open ourselves up to positive and negative experiences and experiences that can be perceived in either way. And it's up to us to create the perspective and reality that we wish to have about the experiences that we're having. Um, so this has been a pretty powerful episode. This has been some big stuff here. Um, um, so drop a comment below, um, tell me if you are a witch, um, and tell me, you know, what the path that you're setting out on looks like, you know, are you a creator? Are you creating your reality? What reality are you creating? Um, if you still have questions about how to know if you're a witch, drop me a comment about that as well. I would love to hear your questions, um, you know, be able to give you feedback about your spiritual path and practice. So make sure that you comment below, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you can get notifications whenever I put out a new video. Um, and I will see you next week.